Hi, good morning everyone. It's a pleasure to see so many faces here today for such an important conference. And a real pleasure for me to uh, welcome you to the brilliant city of uh, Liverpool. We've got a huge turnout of different uh, representative agencies today. We've got people from NHS England, important uh, funder, the independent uh, advocacy groups, Care Quality Commission, charities, regional organisations, uh, executive and regional integrated care board uh, leaders, universities, community providers, prison service, uh, front, key frontline multi-professional staff from uh, an incredible 33 healthcare provider organisations across the country. And online we're joined uh, by the World Health Organisation uh, and Human Rights Watch. And it's really important, I think, for me to just say all of these groups are here because I think um, one of the great lessons out of HOPES is the importance of the system. I know we talk euphemistically about the system, um, and it means something different to different people, but I think when we talk about uh, the care group that, that HOPES attends to and addresses, then the system is incredibly complicated, incredibly diverse. And I think it's a, an incredible achievement for the HOPES team, not just to have developed the model, but actually to have convened the system in the way that it is here at the second uh, HOPES conference. But I think the most important constituency, I think, is the large number of people who have lived experience either directly or as, as carers. Uh, and many of you are here from, from right across the country. Um, and I think the, the, the stories you bring, the insight, the lived insight, uh, is something I think that makes this uh, piece of work, the, the hopes work, very, very special in its own right, but, but actually something that more broadly the NHS should be learning from, uh, generally speaking. Um, uh, I look forward to learning uh, about the impact of hopes today, but I have the, the pleasure of uh, Jennifer and Danny both being Mercy Care employees, so I do get regular updates on, on hopes and that it, uh, it always fills me with joy to hear uh, the progress uh, that the team's making. Really important just to remember the hopes is uh, an acronym I suppose, um, encouraging teams to harness the system through key attachments and partnerships, creating opportunities for positive behaviours, meaningful and physical activities, Identifying protective and preventative risk and clinical management strategies. Building interventions to enhance the coping skills of both staff and people in services. Uh, while um, engaging in these tasks, clinical teams and the system needs to be managed and developed to provide support throughout all stages of the approach. I thought it was just worth going through that just to remind you of those key elements of the HOPES model and the set principles, but just to remind you again that the system is such a sometimes indefinable part of, of the, the, the network, the web with which this all operates, but really, really important today to make sure that we um, are clear that influence in the system, the levers in the system, are really important to us. Uh, as you know, HOPE's a program that uses practice leadership, considered assessment, and an improvement ethos to reduce long-term segregation for people with a learning disability, autistic people, and children, and young people. And uh, we know, and I think many of you will know much better than I know, um, that long-term segregation causes trauma and harm to those who experience it, and those who work in services uh, that use it. So, Finding alternative practices is a national imperative and uh, I think is something that we uh, simply cannot assume will happen unless we, as a system, as a community, uh, deliberately engage in making the case for this all day, every day. I'm very proud as the Chief Executive for Mercy Care, um, uh, which hosts the work, um, to, to have our name associated with the HOPES model. 
Um, as many of you may well know, Mexico has a long-standing commitment for probably over 13 years now to reduce restrictive practices. And that started with wanting to improve our services, reduce harm and restraint generally, to improve the well-being and reduce the trauma for those in our care, as well as to uh, engage our staff in a new model of thinking, an insights-based uh, type of thinking. Um, and over the years, that, that um, started with the No Force First model when, again, Jennifer and Danny walked into my office, I think, when I first arrived with this idea that we were going to take force out of our services, which, which for a new chief executive was a very challenging thought because everybody had told me um, it, it was just the way it is. And these two came and said, no, we need to turn this on its head and think differently. And then, I don't know, five, six, ten years later, I can't remember when, he came again and said, well, I've got an even more radical idea. So we're going to do this thing called a hopes model. And um, for me, uh, what's been really impressive about the hopes model is it started with those sets of principles but has over a couple of years turned into a clear set of practices. And I think that's really impressive for somebody who does my job. And I know Sir Norman Lamb's here, and we talk a lot about how you get theory and good intention into real change in the system. And, and I think it's astonishing to have watched the HOPES team uh, develop the set of practices that go with this now I think there are some 2,600 practitioners across the country trained, which if you stop and think about that from a standing start over a couple of years, that's a pretty incredible number. So I think you're on the edge of something uh, really, really fantastic here. Uh, I know that you've been uh, now doing uh, the solid academic analysis and assessment, the stuff that in our hearts we all know this is the right thing to do. In our hearts we all know it's working. In our heads it's, it's just the case for change is really, really clear. But it's very, very important that we evaluate and rigorously analyse the impact of what we do. Because this has to be brilliant for people who experience services. It has to be a moment of enlightenment for our staff. But we also have to prove the economic case, because there are people who will simply want to see it in terms of pounds, shillings and pence. So um, the last thing I'd like to do today is ask you to put your thinking caps on today and begin to think about how we are able to uh, make sure that this programme moves ahead, that we keep uh, wind in the wings of the HOPES approach. Um, as an NHS Chief Executive, I've seen many things, many brilliant things happen in the NHS and I've seen those same brilliant things a few years later with her on the vine. Um, if you want a very long conversation uh, about why that happens, it'll, it'll, it will take a, a lost weekend with a lot of alcohol, I think. But, but we have a remarkable way, a remarkable way of doing brilliant things and then losing the opportunity. We must not allow that to happen. Uh, to the hope space. So put your thinking caps on and start to think about ways in which uh, we can use collective voice and collective pressure to make sure that um, we don't lose all of the hard won gains. But uh, it's a pleasure to introduce uh, today and I hope you have an absolutely fantastic time. Thanks very much for showing up.